Hey, hey, you guys, what's going on? I hope everybody is having a wonderful Wednesday. Auntie cuckoo has got a, another murder story for you. Who would have thunk it, right? That's right, I said thunk it. Anywho, um, this is going to be the sad and horrific story of um, Cindy Ellinger. At nine years old, murdered on 4th of July. But before I give you all the deets, please don't forget to like, share, and of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Storytime Auntie Cuckoo, K-O-O, K-O-O. Let's do it. Hi, Joe. Um, anyways, so I will give you guys all the deets. This story takes place in Lakewood, Washington in 1996. Like I said, it's July 4th. Little Cindy Allinger um, <clears throat> goes outside to play with her siblings. You know, they live in a little town out playing playing all day long and dinner time comes mom's making dinner siblings show up but where's little cindy cindy does not show up for dinner so mom obviously gets a little freaked out you know but it's fourth of july so she goes looking like where's my child maybe she you know doing sparklers somewhere i don't know searching for a child cannot find her anywhere looking around banging on neighbor's door no sign of little cindy so mom calls 911 and, um, oh, I just knocked my earring out. So mom calls 911 and, um, reports her daughter missing. Damn it. Who would have thought that would have happened right now while I'm on live? Anyways, about my earring. So she calls 911 and reports her daughter missing. So the police obviously begin searching and over a hundred people showed up to help search for little Cindy. They searched and they searched and they searched. They could not find her anywhere. They were going through, you know, brushes and shrubs, like on their hands and knees and groups, searching for this little girl. Could not find her anywhere at all. It was a friend of mom's, mom's name's Rhonda, from their church that actually had called the police line and left this, this type of, I don't even know how to explain it. She claimed to be a psychic and said that when she was sleeping, she had a vision of a little girl that looked a lot like Cindy, either in a field sleeping or else dead. So the police could not get her to make any statements on record. Um, but she was willing to show them a map of where this vision, premonition, whatever you want to call it for psychics, um, was at to direct them. Well, this area had already been searched by the multiple people that were searching for Cindy on their hands and knees. This area had already been searched. They're like, what? What do you mean this is where she is? Lo and behold, the police go out there and there is Cindy. She is wrapped up, I think four times in like shag carpet next to an abandoned house under a hot water tank. She'd been there the whole time. They'd already searched the area, but missed it. So the psychic is the one who led them to it. Needless to say, when a child or any murder, really, um, they look at the people that are closest. So they started looking at Cindy's mom and dad. You know, and they found her dead. Um, so they start looking at Cindy's mom and dad. Of course, the psychic, too, they're going to look at her like, how the hell did you know where this body's at, right? Like, really? Really? Explain to me how. So, um, but the dad... Mom and dad are divorced. Dad had an alibi. He was cleared. Mom did not pass a polygraph. So the police were like, mm, mama, mm -mm -mm. they were concerned, you know, and some things she said just didn't make sense. But at the same time, remember, her child just went missing, you know, like frantic. What's up, Michelle? Um, you know, frantic and looking for, you know, where her child is. So she was just spouting off and saying whatever she could. Please find my child. So police were concerned, but dad was knocked out. He had an alibi. They also had double checked with the psychic who had led them to Cindy's body. She had an alibi. Had, as far as I can see, had nothing to do with it. So it's at this point in time, like I'd said at the beginning, that Cindy was out front playing with her siblings, that her younger sibling, Ashley, Cindy was nine years old and she had a little sister named Ashley who was seven. Little Ashley comes forward and is like, well, when I was playing with Cindy, she had said she was going to Raz's house. Well, Raz is a 30-year-old musician, grown-ass man. Right? What do you get little girls coming over to your house for, Raz? Anyways, grown-ass man who had a dog. And Cindy, like most kids, she loved pets. And she would go over to Raz's house and pet the dog and hang out. And he, like I said, he was a musician. So in his shed, he had drums. And she'd come over and play. 
a few times, Cindy had actually taken her little sister, Ashley, with her. So Ashley, like, knew who this man was and whatnot. So after they found the body, Ashley's like, well, the last time I saw Ashley out front, I'm sorry, the last time I saw Cindy out front playing with me, being Ashley, was we were playing and she said she was going to Raz's house. Never seen again. So the police obviously go to Raz, and which his real name is Guy Matthew Rassisman. Okay, he's a musician, 30-year-old. Come to find out, please start to dig into his background. They're digging it up, and they find out that this mofo is playing with these little girls. Right? Like, that right away is a... But anyways, actually has some background history. His background history, history is he spent six years in prison for... And I don't want to say the wrong thing, so let me double check it before I say it. For raping a teen and assaulting a 10-year-old little girl. But he was not listed on the sex offender registry. Because like I said, this happened in 1996. And his previous charges were before that law went into place where sex offenders had to be registered. So he wasn't even on their list. Anywho, thank you, little Miss Ashley, for being aware. You know, little sister, seven years old, and being like, well, no. Cindy went to Raz's house. God bless you, Ashley, for being so small and so smart. I love you. So the police go to his home and they begin searching. Like I said, Cindy's been missing for weeks now and they've been searching whatnot, but the psychic came in and was able to find the body, but it was weeks until then. Well, when they search Raz's home, they find, and they ask him, like, oh, do you know Cindy? And he's like... I don't know. I met her like one time and barely knew her and I told her she couldn't hang out here. Liar. Liar. That's not what happened. <laughs> Ashley's been to your home, you little lying scumbag. Anywho, they search his freaking home. Not only do they find, you know, so much stuff, but in his trash, little Cindy had draw, drone, drawn blah, 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 a picture of his dog that she'd like to go over and pet, and he had ripped it up, shredded it up, and thrown it in his trash after he knew she was missing. Like, that already was like a, mm, to the police, you know, like a light bulb. So on top of that, they're like, let's find his clothes from the 4th of July. He claims he has an alibi. So they go searching for his clothes. Whatever reason, this little scumbag douche threw all his dirty clothes into the bathtub. So they were able to find the clothes, he was like a hippie guy and whatnot, so his shirts were like tie-dyed, multicolor. So the police are looking at it, and they don't see anything when they first look at it, and they send it off to forensics. Well, forensics won, you know, obviously we're, what, 2021? Shit has changed so much. But even back then, the police were able to look and see that on his clothing, he had the seeds, the leaves, everything from the area that Cindy's body was found, where she was found rolled up in the carpet at the abandoned house. So everything off of her body, as far as, like, plant matter and seeds and bushes and grass, not only, like, match exactly to the seeds and grass and plant matter on his shoes and socks and shirt, but to the exact same, like, stage, you know, like, flowers bloom. They start like this and this and this, and then they become beautiful, right? Right, you get it? So... It wasn't like there was beautiful bloom flowers on her and seeds on him. No, the seeds all matched up. Well, you want another double whammy? Top it off on his shirt. Like I said, it was multicolored. They'd seen a stain. They tested that stain and it came back positive for human blood. Yahtzee, right? Well, not only was it positive for human blood, it came back with two genetic profiles in it. That spot of blood. Busted, bitch. Busted. So it comes back. It not only has Cindy's blood in it, but has Raz, as he likes to be called. His name is Guy Matthew Rasmussen, I believe. 30-year-old scumbag. Um, but not only did it have Cindy's blood in it, but it had Raz's semen. So not only do we have the plant matter and everything else from it, we have her blood and his semen mixed together. So he gets arrested and he ends up being charged with, um, and I don't want to get it wrong. He gets charged with aggravated murder, child kidnapping, first degree child rape, and pretend, 
premeditated murder. He ends up getting charged like guilty as is, as he should be. So he gets, you know, guilty on all charges as you motherfucking should be. Yeah, I said the F word. Bleep it out, Facebook. Bleep it out. So, um, he does. He gets charged and is sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. I mean, it's a devastating story because, like, what little girl? She was out on the 4th of July playing with her siblings. Went to a dude's house that she'd gone to many times to pet his dog. And, like I said, he was a musician and played drums and stuff. But her mom thought she was going to Shannon's house, her friends. If it weren't for her little sister, Ashley, speaking up and saying no when she left, seven years old, you know, Ashley spoke up and said, no, she said she was going to Raz's house. If it weren't for that, I'm not sure that they would have figured out who'd done it. Nonetheless, the psychic from mom's church, mom's name again is Rhonda, weeks, you know, as they're looking for her, no one could find her. The psychic had called in and was like, hey, I have a premonition, a vision. Here's where this body is. I don't know what you guys believe, what you don't as far as psychics come, but to me, that's wildness. Makes me believe in that stuff. My mom was always into it, so I believe it too. But either way, they double checked the psychic. She had n she had an alibi, no ties. There was no way she was part of this at all. But she certainly did lead the police to this little girl's body in an area that they had searched repeatedly. Craziness. Um, but yeah, he was sentenced to a life in prison without the possibility of parole. Um, I don't know if I said this either when I had mentioned that he had been charged previously with, you know, raping a little girl and assaulting another little girl, but there was two murders that they thought that he was responsible for. He had failed the polygraphs on those, but at the end of the day, there wasn't enough evidence that they ended up having to let him go. So they believe that if it weren't for little Ashley, seven-year-old little sister of Cindy who was murdered speaking up that this mofo probably would have gone on and continued to kill for years and years which is crazy you know could you imagine going out on 4th of July going out in front of your door and doing sparklers hanging out with your friends and some mofo that you've gone by his house petting his dog leads you somewhere rapes you beats you to death and then rolls you up in a carpet you're a twisted twisted man Raz. That's what he likes to go by. Raz. So, um, oh, I forgot this part too. So when they did finally go arrest him, like I said, he was a musician. He was at a local, um, like bar or wherever on stage playing, rocking it out, you know, cause I'm Raz and I'm rocking it out. The police like bombarded his ace and arrest him right there on stage. And I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah. You want to make a scene? Let's make a scene. Arrest him in front of everyone. I loved it. Anyways, so that's what I got for you guys today. What'd you think? Anyhow, that's it. Thank you guys so much for checking in with Auntie Cuckoo. I appreciate it. I hope everyone is doing well, staying safe and healthy. As usual, you guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Storytime Auntie Cuckoo, K-O-O, K-O-O. What up, George? Um, don't forget to subscribe and like. And like I said, do good things. Be kind to one another. Give hugs, not drugs. Make love, not war. Let's do it. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks for checking in. Deuces.